So you want to make all state, huh? Well, you came to the right place. This is one of those weird flex moments, but I found this in my room and this is what I wore to graduation. It was my uh, honors thing. I don't even know what this is called. And I put all my band medals on it. So uh, this is how I walk into my high school graduation. And um, these are all county medals. And then these were the all district. And then all four years of high school, I made all state. There is a disclaimer though. None of these are jazz. I've never auditioned for a jazz honors band. I wish I had. So I'm not gonna make a how to make all state jazz video because I don't feel qualified to teach that since I've never auditioned for it. Recently, I was a judge for all district around this area and wow, I have a lot of advice to give because when I was in high school and I was auditioning, I didn't really know what the majority of people sounded like in their auditions. Now I do. I judge like 80 saxophones for their district or for this district and only four of them, literally four, played well you know well is subjective by well i mean like played in the style that these all county and district and all state bands want so the first thing the most important thing in any of these auditions is your sound nothing is more important than your sound you can have incredible technique but if it sounds bad who cares? You have to be able to put yourself in the perspective of someone who doesn't play your instrument. And I say this because imagine a flute player. All right, imagine you're listening to a flute player and all you hear is like airy, but their fingers are going fast. But all you hear is just do you really care what they just played? You don't know what's going on in their fingers. The flute players can be like, oh my God, he's playing so technical and what a hard passage. But for you, you don't know what's going on here, so you don't care. All you know is how they sound. <laughs> did, did you like it? Would you like that? I don't think you would. And so when you're a saxophone player and you see people playing these blazing fast stuff and you might get intimidated, but their sound is bad, that really goes a long way, the bad sound. Sound matters more than anything. Imagine a hierarchy. So here is your hierarchy, right? Now the most important thing is going to be sound. Everything above it, which I'm gonna get to, only matters if this is good. Otherwise, none of this other stuff matters. Sound is everything. So this was one thing that was my weakness for a long time. During middle school, my band director would always say, like, you know, you're, you know your scales, you know your stuff, but it's your sound that you need to work on. And I was just like, huh? Like, what does that mean? I, I'm playing the saxophone, the, the notes are coming out, that sound, I have a good sound, right? And I just didn't know what he meant. He was like, you can work on your tone. And I was like, how do you work on your tone? And do you just do long tones? So I did my long tones and um, still didn't really do much. All it did was make me able to hold a note more stable for longer periods of time and increase my stamina, but it didn't make my tone nicer. And I was like, what? What is this whole tone? What is this? thing about tone and sound. And then I started doing some more digging. I found a recording by Tamer Sullivan doing one of the etude pieces for our district. And I was in utter disbelief. I was like, this is a saxophone? I've never heard something so gorgeous and just so royal. It sounded like someone was expressing themselves. I, I got so many goosebumps. I was like, this is like powerful. I didn't know this instrument that I play is capable of producing this. I, I have to be able to do this. And Tamer was able to like tell a story through black notes on a page. Now a good sound is subjective, right? Some people like this sound. Some people like this sound. And everyone sounds different. So how do you get a sound that people will go, oh, that's a good sound, yet you like the sound too? Here's the key. You must try to imitate a player's sound who is widely accepted. You should really get to know some of the main classical saxophone players of our time. A few of them is Timothy McAllister, Joseph Luloff, Otis Murphy, Tamer Sullivan, like I mentioned, Claude DeLongola, Nikita Zeman, and there's a ton more. Within all these players, you're bound to find one of them whose sound you really like. And whoever it is, pick which one to idolize and really aspire to have their sound. You wanna to try to replicate someone's sound before you start adding your own flair to it. 
And naturally, you're always going to have your own flair just because no one can truly replicate someone else. Don't spend too much time just trying to be original. Plus, if you really do want to find your own voice, I highly suggest you explore jazz because that's what jazz is about, is finding your own voice. Classical saxophone is more about figuring out how to be uniform, how to blend with an ensemble, how to reach a sort of idealism. So my shortcut to you for to getting a good sound is to find a player who's widely accepted and listen to them a lot and really try to imitate their sound. Get their sound in your ear, search up their saxophone setup, search up their mouthpiece, search up their ligature, search up their reed. That way you can be on even terms. That's what I did. And if you ever play a bunch of different saxophones, you would see that the actual saxophone doesn't have that much impact on your sound. It's the mouthpiece, the reed, and the ligature in terms of equipment. This has the most impact on your sound. And that way, once we're on an equivalent level of equipment, then I could really start to focus on me because now I can't blame my equipment anymore because, oh, we're playing the same thing. Now I know I'm the problem. Let me see what I need to do to fix it. That allowed me to really explore what's going on internally and really start to work on it. So let me get my saxophone out. Now, as I've said, a good sound on saxophone is subjective because a saxophone can sound like so many different things. But that being said, that doesn't mean that there isn't objectively bad sounds on saxophone. There are things on saxophone that sound bad all across the board, no matter what. When I was judging all district here last year, this was the most common objectively flawed thing that I've heard. It is the pinched sound. I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Now it usually becomes a lot more apparent when people are playing in the higher register where the palm keys are or anywhere with an octave key on it really. And some people just the whole saxophone in general. The reason why people play pinched is because they're biting with their armature going they're just like, mm, mm. You don't need to be biting. You need to find a pressure where you can be relaxed with your armature and question, are your reeds too strong for you? Because you really shouldn't be biting. I still play on threes. Otis Murphy plays on threes, and sometimes three and a half. There seems to be like this reed culture where the stronger the reed, the better you are. No, no. It's all about the ratios from the mouthpiece opening and the baffle and the chamber and the armature and your voicing. There's a lot of factors that goes into what is your sweet spot range of reed strength. It's not, oh, thicker reed, better sound. No, a lot of times the thicker reed is gonna give you a really airy sound. Another thing you should be really accustomed to is voicing. Voicing is the use of your tongue and throat muscles to create a better sound. I know when I was coming up, I only thought amateur was the main thing. I didn't think that everything that goes on inside of your mouth mattered that much, but it matters a ton. I like to go Disney, like a French E. That gives me the proper air speed to produce a nice, warm sound. The faster your air, the better your sound in classical saxophone. So if you can get the nice stream of air just direct, and you'll get a nice, warm sound. Another thing that people did that you really want to avoid is harsh articulation. Now, tonguing with a nice, light articulation is difficult. It's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of precision work. So what I do, I, I raise the back of my tongue, like this, eh. and I tongue with the tip of my tongue to the tip of the reed. Now for the longest time, I thought I was doing that the whole time. I was like, I am a tip to tip tonguer. <laughs> yeah, I thought it. Then I got to college and my teacher was like, and he diagnosed me. I was actually anchor tonguing. Anchor tonguing 
is what a lot of jazz players do and what I still do when I'm playing jazz. It's where the tip of your tongue is in the back of your bottom teeth. So it's planted right here. And then you just ask me to tongue. And then you use that part where I just pointed to to tongue to read. Bad, bad. You get harsh sound. You get harsh articulation. Really check yourself. Are you doing this? Are you anchor tonguing? Or are you using this part of your tongue anywhere? of this part of the tongue, the tongue the mouthpiece. Or do you have too much tongue on the reed? Say this is the mouthpiece and this is your reed. Are you like this? Uh, uh, uh. And please don't tell me you're the type that tongues with the roof of your mouth. So you're not even touching the reed, you're just touching the roof of your mouth, the tongue. Don't do that on saxophone, please. I'm going to demonstrate each one of these now. <laughs> Now another thing you never want to do on classical saxophone is scoop a note unless the music specifically calls for it. But otherwise do not purposely scoop into a pitch. Never, 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 never. And that's pretty much what I'm going to cover for sound. You want to do your long tones, of course. Always do some sort of exercise that incorporates holding out notes for long periods of time. Know that in classical saxophone, a dark sound is the desired sound. A sound that resonates through the room. A sound that is elegant. A sound that is royal. A sound that is... <sighs> sounds like creamy golden chocolate. But there's no amount of words that I can say there or that anyone can say that will make you understand more than just listening to a great player. And I mentioned those names earlier. Check out all of them. See which one you like. There's still a lot more. Check out more of your own. If there is one, put it in the comments. Be like, have you checked out this guy? And I'll probably be like, yeah, I, I have checked him out. But if you show me a name I haven't heard of, I will check him out. Like. Check out, check them out. Let's let's just check out a bunch of sax players. Come on, let's 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 do this.